Did theropod dinosaurs evolve the ability to fly? Most secular scientists actually believe that the answer to that question is in the affirmative. They also claim that the evidence in support of that conclusion is beyond question. Those that champion the evolution of feathered flight from theropod dinosaurs, they typically rely on the fossil record to support most of their conclusions. This confidence in the fossil record has exploded in just the last 20 or so years with the discovery of exceptionally preserved examples of feathered theropods which supposedly closed the transitionary gap between dinosaurs and birds. In this video, I am going to assume the validity of feathered dinosaurs. For those that want to investigate this particular issue a little further, just follow the link in the description and that will take you to a three-part series on this very subject. So, taking the fossil record at face value, just how compelling is the transitional nature of flight in theropod dinosaurs? Well, it all depends on how you interpret it. Take this slide from a Ted Ed YouTube documentary as an example. The tree and the branches in this frame depict the evolution of feathered flight from more primitive dinosaurs on the left to more advanced forms on the right, with modern birds appearing to the far right and top. From the left we have Ceuromimus, followed by Tyrannosaurus, then Cynosauropteryx, Cordypteryx, Microraptor, Anchionus, Archaeopteryx, and then Confuciusornis, followed of course by modern birds. Notice also that the supposed evolution of flighted theropods is linked to the evolution of the feather with simple feather-like adaptations to the left and more derived or advanced adaptations to the right. This general trend of more primitive to more derived or evolved feathered theropod dinosaurs is common fear in the public perception of feathered flight. Go to just about any website and or social media platform and you'll get the same general story. Even public education platforms are not immune from this general narrative as the image on this PBS webpage demonstrates. Again, we see the evolution of feathered flight depicted as a progression starting with more primitive theropods on the left and evolving to advanced forms on the right with modern birds depicted at the very end. In this sequence, we have Cynosauropteryx to the left, then Velociraptor, Unanlagia, Cordypteryx, Protoarchaeopteryx, Archaeopteryx, and Eoalalevis, and then modern birds. In this image, each example in the bottom diagram depicts major adaptations and exaptations that progress towards powered flight to the right. The evolution of the wing itself is depicted in the top diagram. But, and here is the important question, does this perception of the evolution of feathered flight actually accord with the fossil record? Well, let's take a look. This is a list of all the groups that belong to the clade Manoraptoriforms. This particular group includes all of the theropod dinosaurs that have pinaceous feathers and are therefore supposedly more related to birds than to more primitive cursorial theropods. The vertical lines represent the range through geologic time that each of the groups supposedly lived. In other words, no members of these groups are found either before the bottom of the lines or above them. The names of each of the groups is colored to match its range and so it's easy to identify. I've purposefully removed Aviale, which is the group that goes through till the present and contains what we typically think of when we use the word bird in our everyday vernacular. My focus in this video is on the evolution of feathered flight, not of birds in general, so that means keeping things simple. I've also only included Mesozoic time in the geologic column. So from a secular perspective, from about 245 million years ago to about 66 million years ago. Let's now use this diagram in conjunction with the TED-Ed and PBS diagrams, which themselves are representative of the broader perception within public education to demonstrate that the gradual and sequential evolution of flight does in fact not accord 
with the fossil record. Notice, first of all, that Archaeopteryx is considered to be the most advanced theropod dinosaur before we get to Aviale, which is here in our Ted Ed diagram. Some paleontologists even place Archaeopteryx within Aviale, which would essentially be saying that it is a bird in the modern sense of the word. Archaeopteryx had fully developed pinaceous feathers and was capable of powered flight. This means being able to produce lift under its own power, and of course that would mean flapping its wings. Archaeopteryx's fully developed pinaceous feathers in this figure, indicating the most evolved state for feathers, in concert with its ability to fly, make it a very advanced player in the supposed evolution of flight. Multiple feathered lineages appear before Archaeopteryx and are depicted as more primitive theropods that hadn't achieved this evolutionary status. So does this picture match what we find in the fossil record? Well, let's take a look at our diagram. Here is the Archaeopterygidae group that contains Archaeopteryx. Actually, this group more than likely only contains just two genera, the most important being Archaeopteryx. In terms of the evolution of flight, all of the other groups in this chart are actually considered more primitive. Can you see the problem with this? Well, it means that almost all of the evolutionary groups that supposedly link primitive, non-feathered theropods to Archaeopteryx and that are represented on this Ted Ed image appear above Archaeopteryx in the fossil record. Apart from Antiornithidae then, all of the data or evidence in support of the evolution of feathered flight is missing from where we would expect to find it in the fossil record, and that is below Archaeopteryx. This observation has not missed the attention of some evolutionary scientists. Paleontologist Alan Fiducia says, it would not tax the imagination to engender a long list of obstacles for the now dominant model of a theropod origin of birds, including, but not limited to, the fact that the stratigraphic sequence of bird-like theropods has been almost the reversal of the expected evolutionary sequence leading to birds. Fiducia is a well-known but rather disliked character in the paleontological world because of his belief that feathered theropods evolved from ancient reptiles called archosaurs and not from dinosaurs. His opinion is, of course, irrelevant for our discussion here, but his observations are certainly telling. Okay, so let's now take a look at the PBS illustration. Notice that once again, Archaeopteryx appears in an evolutionary advanced position, whereas all of these other groups are only links in the chain that supposedly show how feathered flight progressed. Yet, as we've already seen, all of these other groups actually appear in the fossil record above Archaeopteryx. Towards the top of the illustration, we are furnished with a very convincing sequence for the evolution of feathers and wings. Yet according to a strict reading of the geologic column, the very advanced Archaeopteryx wing actually goes here in the sequence. There is almost no evidence for the evolution of the feathered wing before Archaeopteryx in the geologic record. Now, I did say almost, and that's because of this group right here, Anchionithidae. Most important to our discussion are the specific examples of this family that occur in the fossil record prior to Archaeopteryx, of which there are only two, Eosonopteryx and Anchionis. These two examples were found in strata that, from a conventional perspective, date to 160 million years ago for Eosonopteryx and 163 million years ago for Anchionis. That's about 10 to 15 million years before Archaeopteryx. Until recently, neither of these taxa were considered capable of powered flight, even though both had pinaceous feathers. Yet this paper, published in 2021, tentatively claims that Anchionis, the oldest known feathered theropod in the fossil record, might have been capable of powered flight after all. If this is accurate, this means that evolutionary transitions for feathered flight are completely and utterly absent from the fossil record. Not a single fossil of a pinaceous feather has been found before this point in the fossil record. In one geologic moment, you have ground-dwelling theropod dinosaurs like Sinoceropteryx. 
The next geologic moment you have panaceous feathers in flight in all its glory. In a nutshell then, this nice evolutionary sequence, one that is endorsed in just about every secular textbook on the evolution of the bird, is not supported by a strict sequential reading of the fossil record. In part two, I will seek to demonstrate that even these so-called evolutionary transitions may be better understood in terms of the secondary loss of flight. So make sure you look out for that video. Okay, so that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Uh, there's a link to my website for further resources. There's a book, of course, if you're interested as well. And of course, if you were blessed or in any way helped by this video, then please hit that like button. I really, really appreciate it. Of course, for further access to more videos as I upload them, then go ahead and press the subscribe button and ring the bell as well. As always, I appreciate prayer. If you could pray for me right now, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and goodbye.